Today we're talking about the one massive mistake that most new divers make and how to correct it. Roll intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. Thank you so much for joining me. It's time for a classic mouthpiece Monday, where I share scuba industry hints and tips to make you a better, safer diver. So if you want to be a better scuba diver, make your next dive on our subscribe button, and we'll dive straight into it. Now, I don't deal in clickbait, so we're going to go straight to the chase. Without a doubt, my most requested coaching session as a professional dive instructor is, can you help me work on my buoyancy? Undoubtedly, yes I can, and yes, whilst paying out money to a training agency to print out a buoyancy specialty card is a completely worthless exercise, buoyancy, working on your buoyancy, is always a skill that can be refined and improved. So to make sure I'm being clear before the comment section explodes, buoyancy specialty courses, horseshit working on your buoyancy with the guidance coaching and training of a dive professional awesome incredible super fantastic great and if you want to get better at buoyancy you need to understand archimedes principle of submerged object in liquid and the physics of displacement if you weigh more than the weight of the volume of water that you displace you sink if you weigh less than the weight of the volume of water that you displace you float to be neutrally buoyant therefore you need to weigh the same as the volume of water that you displace. Therefore, to change your buoyancy, you need to either displace a different amount of water by breathing in or breathing out, filling or emptying your lungs, or by inflating or deflating your BCD, or change your weight, usually by adding or subtracting lead. Now, generally, most divers have an intuitive sense of buoyancy as it pertains to their lungs and BCD. And even if they're not perfect at the start, they will get it eventually. I breathe in, I go up. I add air, I stop going down. The weighting side, though, seems to be a major sticking point. Most divers are adamant, absolutely locked on, obsessed to the thought that they need more weight than they actually do. Now, where could that idea have come from? And that's the rub. As I've explained in other videos, one of the toxic habits of less reputable dive instructors is convincing their students that they need more weight than they actually do. I get it. Overweighting your students is fast. Uh, it's very convenient for the instructor. It cuts time off of the courses, makes the course faster. It makes your students easier to control because you know if you overweight them and you're going to be making them kneel for skills anyway, right? Why does it matter if you anchor them to the bottom and just shove a couple of extra pounds in there? Absolutely reprehensible behavior. Ugh, boils my blood. Conversely, it takes time to perfect weighting. It takes effort from your instructor to make sure you're diving with the minimum amount of weight. Now, I believe a large portion of divers, would I say most? Yeah, let's go with most. I believe most divers have been convinced that they need more weight than they actually do. They go out into the world and request ludicrous amounts of weight from their dive guide. I see it every single dive. And if you're on you know a dive boat working you're a first mate you're a dm you're a dive boat captain please please head to the comment section and back me up on this right now i see you know the petite men and women diving in a rash garden shorts asking for 14 or 16 pounds of lead when they probably need half of that insane or the classic from the surface to the dive boat i can't get under i need more lead all the while they're kicking to tread water Stop kicking! You're sink! You have plenty of lead! You're fine! So let's look at why diving with too much lead is a problem. How do you know if you're overweighted? And how do you fix it? You always want to be diving with the minimum amount of lead, which I will refer to in this video as ideal weighting. For lots of reasons, but for these two in particular. Number one, buoyancy is easier with your ideal amount of weight. Less gas in your BCD means buoyancy changes as you change depth are less extreme. So if you're diving overweighted, you need to overcompensate 
with your BCD by adding more gas. The more gas in your BCD, the more gas expansion will occur as you swim up and over that rocky outcrop or reef line, which means the more your buoyancy will be affected. Conversely, the less gas you have in your BCD, the less extreme changes in buoyancy will be as you change depths, and neutral buoyancy will be easier to nail. And it's easy to spot. Look around you on your next 30 foot reef dive. Look at the other divers' BCDs. See the diver there where their BCD is a balloon, it's three quarters full of gas, but they seem to be swimming along, doing all right, they're neutrally buoyant. Too much lead. There's no way your BCD should be that full at depth. So one way to tell if you're overweighted on your next dive is consider how much gas you're putting into your BCD. If you're hammering on that inflator button to stop you from going into the sand like a lawn dart, you're probably overweighted. Descents when ideally weighted should be controlled and easy to stop. Secondly, diving with too much weight increases your gas consumption, something we all want to work on as divers. Not only do you have to put more gas in your BCD to stay off the bottom, which is a waste of gas, comes from the same source as the gas you're breathing, you're also going to increase your sac rate. Imagine walking up a hill versus walking up a hill carrying a weight. If you have to propel excess lead through the water column, you will breathe more. Your cylinder won't last as long. Your dives will be shorter and less enjoyable. Your buddy will get all twisted up at you. Your work performance will drop off. Your boss will despise you. You'll be less desirable to your preferred mating gender. Your family will disown you and move away. All right, maybe I went too far, but nothing good will happen if you dive overweighted. So how do we fix this and nail your ideal weighting? Well, most divers are taught to dive, do a weight check at the start of their dive. I hope you were. This is a fine practice and it goes something like this. You jump in, reg in, mask on, and you empty your BCD whilst holding a normal breath and you should float somewhere around eye level. I think that's pretty much verbatim from the scuba training manuals. Then when you breathe out, you should start to sink. The main mistake student divers make here is they actually instinctively, because they're mammals, hold their breath and start to tread water and kick to keep their face above the water. So one tip I have as an instructor is when I'm doing this check, I uh, ask my students to cross their ankles and I check their fins aren't furiously kicking to keep themselves up. But during the, during the weight check, that's definitely something you want to avoid. However, this will only tell you if you have enough lead to get under. It won't tell you if you have too much. So to absolutely nail ideal weighting, you need to do a weight check at the end of your dive. Once you've finished your safety stop and are just about to surface, you are the lightest and most buoyant you will be during that dive. You have depleted air from your cylinder and air has a mass. So let's say you went from 3000 PSI, 207 bar, down to 500 PSI or 35 bar reserve, which has therefore dropped maybe about three or four pounds worth of gas weight. You don't think about air as having weight, but if you compress it down enough, it definitely does. So you're the lightest you're gonna be, you're back in the shallow, so your wetsuit is no longer compressed and it's in its most buoyant state. That is the condition that you need to be weighted for. So can you stay neutrally buoyant under those conditions with little to no air in your BCD? If so, bam, you've nailed ideal weighting. So at the very end of your next dive, have your buddy watch you complete your safety stop and just before you actually come up to the surface, empty any remaining gas from your BCD. Are you neutrally buoyant? If you start to sink, you are overweighted. So take a small amount of lead off for the next dive and try again. And it is trial and error. You're gonna find online a whole bunch of these magic formulas that tell you how much lead you need. None of those, they're a good guide, but none of them are to be fully relied on. It really is just trial and error. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in next week's video. Dive safe, dive often.